everybody can say now with 100% certainty, as you could for the last eight months, the reason that there is no ceasefire is because of Hamas. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Guys, I'm checking out Douglas Murray blasts Hamas over refusal to end war with Israel. I really think it's gonna happen. Like, I honestly believe this war should have ended a long time ago. Like, I feel they are pushing it further and further. Like, people are dying, and for me, it does not make sense. But well, guys, let me think about this. What has we thought about this war? Can I leave it in my comment section, guys? Let's get straight into this. Now, let's talk about the Hamas-Israeli war, the US-backed ceasefire proposal. The negotiations there are continuing. Uh, Hamas has sent back an unworkable counteroffer. Even the US Whoa. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, acknowledges that uh, the war's going to go on with that unworkable counter from Hamas. They're refusing to agree to a plan that would include the release of hostages in exchange for a ceasefire. But it's worth noting, Douglas, that the Biden administration has the likes of National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, who has said some of the amendments proposed by Hamas are minor and anticipated. It's almost like he's <laughs> negotiating on their behalf. Uh, so much for not negotiating with terrorists. It seems the Biden administration has some who are negotiating on behalf of terrorists. Well, you know, I, I find this latest round of, of peace talks uh, to be an extraordinary uh, set of events. Uh, Israel is trying to get the remaining hostages back. It performed, or the IDF performed, special forces performed an extraordinarily impressive uh, uh, raid this past week in which they rescued uh, four, four of the poor Israelis who have stolen from the Nova Party on the 7th of October last year and have been tortured and Whoa. and more in captivity all the last eight months. Um, so the, 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 the Israelis want to find a way, of course, to get the hostages back. With the Americans and other interlocutors, they, they've got this plan, uh, and this plan would bring an end to the war. Now, who is the party that refuses to bring an end to the war? It's Hamas. And I wonder, Rita, whether all the morons protesting on the streets of Australia and America and everywhere else in the West uh, calling for ceasefire will register for even a moment that a ceasefire actually is on the table once again. And who is it that has rejected it? Hamas. And... You know, I, I, I wonder when he, whether any of these morons will notice this. I doubt it. But if, if the war is going to go on, everybody can say now with 100% certainty, as you could for the last eight months, the reason that there is no ceasefire is because of Hamas. Absolutely. Well, the, the, the morons, as you call them, marching in the streets in Australia, they never mention Hamas. Uh, it, it's always like Hamas don't exist. Uh, yep. And uh, you are going to be involved in a debate next week where you're, you will argue that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism. Tell me why you think that is the case, because there are many on the left in particular who argue that being anti-Israel, being anti-Zionist is not the same as being anti-Semitic. And they point often to the fact that there are prominent Jews who call themselves anti-Zionists. Yeah, um, I'm going to keep my powder dry for Toronto on Monday night. Uh, <laughs> but it's a... It's a uh, not it's giving a it away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving anything away. I mean, it's a topic that's incredibly important because um, just look at the way in which this word Zionist is now thrown around. I mean, the the mm. the disgust with which it's thrown around, uh, uh, the way in which this word uh, uh, that describes this noble and wonderful concept of Jewish statehood is being used as a slur. And, um, mm. you know, as I say, once again, and I've seen it myself, saw it recently in Australia, in Melbourne and Sydney, you had protesters screaming about Zionists. Zionists, do they know what they're talking about? I don't think so. Um, so uh, I do want to set the record straight on some of that. Uh, uh, I think that this is an extraordinary moment where uh, uh, there should be a moment of clarity 
in the West about this. And instead, mm. I think that we're seeing an explosion of bigotry. And oh. uh, uh, I'm looking forward to getting into the weeds uh, in Toronto on Monday. So I, I think it's sold out. But anyone who wants to come to Roy Thompson Hall, perhaps they can uh, um, bribe their way to get a ticket. I don't know. Oh, well, I pity whoever is facing you in this debate. You're not a man I would want to be having a all-out debate on, yes. particularly on an issue like this, because I know you're passionate about it. And the debate is timely because uh, we now have people marching in America and elsewhere in the West calling on Hezbollah to murder Zionists. And, and there's, uh, it's just disturbing footage. Let's have a quick look. <laughs> And I also want to get your reaction, Douglas, to what we've seen uh, unfold after the rescue of those four hostages. So much criticism of Israel's tactics and the uh, alleged collateral damage from the rescue mission. Was there another way for Israel to rescue its people? Should they have issued a warning, as the BBC suggested, before launching the mission? Um, it's amazing. First of all, on the Hezbollah people, just notice again, uh, like the KKK, these people don't have the confidence to show their faces. Isn't it interesting that they're calling for support mm. for a genocidal terrorist organization? But weirdly, they cover their faces. Maybe, maybe they're not so sure of their views. Maybe they're not so proud of them. Maybe they know that mummy wouldn't be so proud of them. Who knows? Um, as for uh, uh, as as for the sort of the the the, the raid this week, uh, much of the media reported it as the the the, the release of four Israeli hostages. Mm. They weren't uh, uh, brave Israelis um, who were superbly trained. Uh, went in and freed and rescued these uh, uh, four three men and one woman. Um, and uh, the reporting on this has been absolutely despicable. You mentioned the BBC journalist who asked an Israeli official uh, why they didn't give an advance warning of the raid uh, in Gaza. Um, I don't know. That's like asking somebody why they didn't go up to somebody and, and, and say, I'm so sorry, I can't come to your surprise birthday party. Yeah. I mean, the, uh, <laughs> the whole point of a raid like this is that it's a surprise. And the reason is... Uh, that if you'd have given um, uh, advance warning uh, to Hamas in Gaza, uh, then uh, the hostages would like most likely uh, have been killed or spirited away to a, mm. a, a tunnel uh, that uh, Hamas has built at all of our expense in the West. Um, the, I mean, I, I, I'm stunned, as I've said to you before, Rita, that the, the simple lack of empathy with the situation that the Israelis are in they have more than 100 hostages still held by Hamas and Islamic Jihad and terror groups and journalists and others, so-called journalists in Gaza. They want to get the hostages home. If Hamas wanted to end the war, it could end it tomorrow by handing over the hostages. Israel found the opportunity to get four of the hostages out. They were being harbored in civilian homes in a civilian area Whoa. and uh, th there is a war going on there. And, you know, the people who say, uh, you know, uh, there was collateral damage, there were people killed, innocent people killed. Um, I wouldn't believe the Hamas figures, by the way, and those are the ones that most of the media have run with as ever. But uh, even if any civ innocent civilians were killed, obviously that's that's sad. But, you know, the, the, the problem is, is that there's it's almost like there's a moral lesson in this. Don't kidnap people and hold them in your house. Guys, to be honest, this is sad. Like, why would you even kidnap someone in the first place? Like, see, I know the war is bad enough. I really don't know if Hamas is saying that. I really don't understand the agenda. You can see your people is getting killed. And, like, you are still fighting someone who is way, way, way stronger under you. See, this is something I, I have learned in this life. If I fight someone that's stronger than you, don't. It does not mean you'll be a weakling, but don't go after someone that you know will beat you. Like, you have to have some kind of backup or something. I don't think Hamas has any. Or, okay, I'll say they have the media who 
the media is actually fighting for Palestinians, eh, but Hamas is part of them. So indirectly, they're fighting for Hamas. And this is the painful part about it. It's the fact that they're actually supporting this terrorist group. And it's actually heartbreaking in the sense that you're seeing people getting killed. Only God knows what they have done to the woman, the men, what they have passed through. Like, it's heartbreaking. So I was hearing a story about a guy that was in Iraq. They caught alcohol in his car and he was taken to jail. And all he ate was one boiled egg in the morning, one boiled egg in the evening. And he has about one minute to use the toilet. How disgusting do you think that is for a prisoner? And like, imagine what they have done to these people, like how they have treated them, how they have tormented their life. But for you to be with your enemy for eight months is a long time. Like, even a day is a long time. Imagine eight months. You knowing your family crying, you thinking that you will never make it back again. Boy, it's heartbreaking. I honestly believe that this world should end. In the sense that people are dying. Like, innocent people are dying. Fine, let's cry about people that have already died and moved forward. But no, Hamas still don't want to stop it. Now it's going to open way for new people. Like, it's ha- I feel it's heartbreaking enough for you to know that a lot of people have died. People's business have crumbled. Children cannot go to school. Like, people's life have been hold still. And you still want this world to continue. It's just disgusting. I don't understand who is funding them or what their end goal is. But like... I don't think there's a light at the end of the tunnel for them. Like, I just think they should stop and just accept. I wouldn't say accept defeat because they actually started this. I don't think they should just accept their fate and stop the war so they can continue living their life the way it should go. You now you're fighting against the state way stronger than you and you know they are stronger than you and you still choose to. God. But guys, what do you think about this? Like, leave your opinion in the comment section. Let's read and hear your thoughts in the comment section. Guys, I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.